Hi, I'm Chef Alan Tatro with Global Sugar Art. About a year or a year and a half ago, I released a YouTube video on how to make your own fondant covered wedding cake. And it's been so popular, and we've had so many requests to do a buttercream wedding cake. Today, we will be doing a buttercream wedding cake. In part one, I'm going to show you how to decorate the four tier cake and also how to make this a three tiered cake if you have a smaller wedding or you would like a different style of cake. In part two, we're going to do the beginning steps. We're actually going to show you how to slice the cake, fill it, ice it, assemble it with dowel rods so that it's supported correctly, and then how to put the tiers one on top of another uh, to make a cake like this. So it's a little bit backwards. We're going to start with the decorating first this time. Let's get started. Okay, we're back and I have the cake all iced and stacked and dowel rods are in place. So now I'm ready to begin decorating the cake and I've got it up on my turntable. The first thing I want to do is I want to do any measurements that I have to do before I put any decorations on the cake so that if I make a mistake, I can fix that and not have to worry about any measurements being on the cake. If you look at the wedding cake over here, there's no measuring really to be done on the bottom tier or the middle tier, but the top tier, I want these lines, these vertical piped lines to be perfectly up and down and I want them the same uh, depth. So I want all these to be about two and a half inches. The middle ones are gonna be about one and a half inch and the little short ones are going to be three quarters of an inch. Now, you can design any pattern you want for a, a cake like this. This is just something that I came up with that I thought would be easy. I want to emphasize that I tried to devise a cake that the average decorator with very little experience can make. And I'm going to give you some alternative decorating ideas as we do this cake so that if you don't have a lot of experience decorating with buttercream, you still can make your own wedding cake. That's my goal. I'm not looking for perfection. You're going to see that I don't spend a lot of time trying to make the absolute perfect cake here. I want this to be able, I want this to be a project that you can do on your own and that you can be proud of that you made your own wedding cake or that you made a friend's wedding cake. So we're gonna start with this third tier, which is five inches. <clears throat> I've taken regular 5 16 inch ruled um, notebook paper, and I've cut the pieces of paper in half, and I've taped them together, and you'll see why I'm using the ruled paper in a minute. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right around this cake. Remember that this icing now is dried, just on the outside. So I can put this paper on without worrying. And let me do this where you can see it. I've cut this paper so that the two ends just meet. I want it just to go around the edge and stay in place. Now the reason I chose the 5 16 inch ruled paper, which is the most popular spacing, is because every other line is going to be one of my drops my drop string works. So what I've done, I've already done this half. I've taken one of the lines of the paper and I've measured two and a half inches. I'm going to skip a line and then I'm going to do one and a half inches and I'm going to mark that. I'm going to skip a line and do three quarters of an inch. Skip a line and I'm going to do another three quarter of an inch. And now I'm going to go back to the one and a half. You skip a line every single time. Skip a line and now we're going to do two and a half. And then back to one and a half. Skip a line and three quarters and so on. And I would do that across the entire piece of paper. And that's going to be my pattern. Um, like I said, you can create whatever pattern you like if you want to do a drop string. Be creative. Do, it, do something different. Okay, so I'm going to attach this to the cake and I'm going to use a couple of toothpicks to hold it in place. <clears throat> so it's important when you tear a cake like this to decide what is the best looking side. Where is my front of the cake? And I think this is going to be my front right here and I'm going to put a toothpick down at the bottom and I'll always know that that's the front of my cake. 
So if I'm going to put a pattern on my cake, I want to make sure that one of the long, one of the long um, lines is going to be in the front of the cake. And I'm just going to wrap this around the back. And I'm going to put a little toothpick right in there. Okay. I need to make a hole in the paper first. There we go. <clears throat> and we'll do a second one. Make a little hole in the paper. Bring this right up to the top. And then, okay, now that's going to hold my pattern in place. From here, I can use one of two things. <clears throat> I can use a needle tool or I can use a little X-Acto knife. I think I'm going to use the X-Acto knife. I'm going to start in the front of my cake. I'm just going to push in through the paper and that's going to make a little line in my icing. And I'm not going to cut all the way up, but I'm going to make little, little sections at least two or three on each one. On the small ones, I'm doing two. On the medium, the one and a half inch, I'm probably doing three. And on the large, oh, I have tape there. You can tell it's hard to go through. Four. And what this is doing is, this is gonna show me on the icing below exactly where my lines are, where the bottom of each line is, and it's going to give me a, a guide so that I can pipe perfectly straight up and down. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this, and when we come back, we'll, do, we'll start decorating with the bottom tier and we'll work our way up. Okay, so I've gone around the entire cake and I've made all my little marks, <clears throat> and now I can take these toothpicks out and I can take my my pattern off and you can barely see them but on, on a camera they'll be very hard to see but I can see exactly where those lines are and it's going to make that much easier for me to pipe. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the satin ribbons and this is a good time to talk about colors on a cake. On the cake that I did ahead of time so that you could see the whole project finished I used a white buttercream using all white shortening or vegetable fat like Crisco or Trex or something like that. And I used a clear vanilla. Uh, it's an imitation vanilla, but it's, it's so it's clear. And that gives me a really snow white icing. And that tends to be popular in the United States. What's becoming even more popular is just a good old fashioned buttercream that is made with butter or at least partially with butter. Um, and in this case, that's why you're seeing a difference in color. This cake was iced with a buttercream that has butter and regular vanilla in it, so it will impart a little bit of a color. On this cake, I used a really nice white satin ribbon. I don't think it's, I'm going to have the same look if I do that on this cake. So I purchased an ivory ribbon, which is just, it's off-white, and I think that that's going to look far better on this cake than a white ribbon. So. Buy the, buy the ribbon that's going to match. Why did I use a ribbon? Number one, I don't have to pipe a bottom border if I don't want to. It hides a load of mistakes at the bottom of your cake. And if you're a beginner and this is the first time you're doing a cake like this, this is a great way to add some real pizzazz to the cake without having to worry about piping it. So to begin with, we're going to do this middle tier. I'm going to measure around the back and cut my ribbon. And I've got a little bowl of water here. I'm going to wet the ribbon. And so what we want to do now is take the end of that ribbon. Let's see, get a towel here. And I'm going to squeeze out any extra water. I'm just ru running this between my thumb and my finger and I'm squeezing out any extra water. And then I'm just going to dry it a little bit. So it's not wringing wet, but
but it is damp. Let's find the front of our cake again, is right here. So I want this to go right around the front. And I'm going to bring it around the back. Make sure it goes right to the bottom of the cake. And let's see if I can get that nice and flat. I have a little piece that's hanging off. And I'm going to turn this around for you to see how that ribbon just lays flat right on itself. Now, as this ribbon dries, um, it'll start clinging to the cake. It'll contract a little bit. It'll be a little more taunt, and um, it it will um, it will stick right to the cake. Now, I see I didn't get right down to the very bottom here, and I want to make sure that I do. So I'm going to actually pull this back, and I'm going to make sure that ribbon goes right down to the bottom tier. There we go. And then the water will just help stick it right together. If you want, you can actually use a little bit of edible glue on the back and that, uh, to hold that ribbon together. <clears throat> okay, so my first ribbon is done. I'm going to do two more, and then we're going to start decorating the bottom tier. So we have our ribbons on, on the top three tiers. We're not putting one on the bottom. And now I'm going to pipe this rosette border. Now, <clears throat> oftentimes these rosettes can be rather large and you might only fit two, one on top of the other on a four inch tier. So I'm purposely going to make these smaller so that I get three rows and I'm going to keep these very tight um, so that they fill in this entire layer. So I want to show you exactly how to do these. It's just a simple circular motion. Um, put the tip down and squeeze in a circle and you're going to go around once, twice, and then leave the tail off to the right. And then go over about a, an inch once, twice, leave the tail. Once, twice. Always bring that tail over to the right hand side. <clears throat> That's exactly what we're going to do on this cake now. <clears throat> I don't want to start on the front of the cake. I'm going to start toward the back of the cake, <clears throat> and I'm going to do my bottom row. There's one, <clears throat> try to keep them as even as you can. Notice this becomes your bottom border on the cake as well. Sometimes you might get a little air bubble. I didn't mention that this is a tip 1M from Wilton. It's a very large star tip. And I'm just using this with a, uh, an 18 inch disposable bag. If you don't have a lot of decorating experience, stay with the 12 inch bag. It's easier on your hand, you can control it better. almost to the end. Okay, I'm going to stop there and show you how we build the rest of this cake. In between the first two shells, I'm now going to create another one. Always bring that tail over. So now you can see that the second row of shells sits in between the ones on the bottom. And I'm going to refill my bag. Okay, now that I have my second row, I'm going to go in between two that are on the second row, and I'm going to build my top row. And notice I'm going up just over the top of the cake, and that's what's making my top border. 
So there'll be no other borders on this bottom cake. And that's how the whole bottom tier is done. Do your first border all the way around, then your second, and then your third, and you're done your bottom tier. I'll be finishing this one, and then we'll go on and we'll do the rest of the cake. Okay, so what you'll notice is that first row of, of rosettes that I put on were more than a third of the way up. That's because the next row sits in between each rosette. So they're not one right on top of the other. They, they sort of, one sits a little bit lower on the second tier. And also your third tier of rosettes comes up over the top of the cake. So that first row may have looked larger than it should be, but that's how they will all fit together at the end. So now we're gonna move along and we're going to do the second tier. Okay, now we're ready to do the second tier, but I wanna show you an option. I'm going to freehand a reverse scroll with a number two tip on this second tier. But if you're new to decorating, or this is the first time you're doing a wedding cake and you want it to be perfect, there are other ways of doing it. This is a set of decorative side presses. Uh, it's a press set by Wilton. And there's about, I guess, about 28 different pieces in here with different patterns on each one. So what you can do if you don't want to freehand it is you can take one of these press sets and just line it up with your buttercream and just push it in. <clears throat> and you can then turn it over. I just chose one design. And you can just keep going around the cake. And that's going to emboss the pattern that you will then uh, pipe over with a number two tip. So if you don't want to freehand it, you always have the option of using these press sets. And it would probably be very helpful to keep a bowl of hot water to make sure that they're clean. And if they were a little bit wet, they would press into that icing and pull right out and they wouldn't pull little pieces of the icing out. That would be covered over when you pipe over it anyway. So that's an alternative if you don't want to freehand it. But I am going to freehand it and I'll show you basically how to do the reverse scroll. <clears throat> First you start with just a basic scroll pattern. Don't worry if it doesn't complete. That's not my, my object right now is just to get the pattern on the cake. So I'm going in opposite directions and then I'm going to add a little embellishment. And then starting in the middle of each one, I'm going at a little circular motion and I'm piping right over that design. And then I'll do the same thing here. Now you see why I wasn't worried if the icing skipped or left a little bare spot because that's all going to be filled in when I, when I go back over it. So that's how that, that design is done. And if you want more instruction on that, I do have a, um, a video out um, on uh, piping with round tubes and that border is shown in that video as well. Okay, so we're going to start toward the back of the cake. Again, I'm not worried about if, I, if it makes little mistakes. I'm just keeping the tip off the edge a little bit and I'm trying to use as much as the available space as I have. The, this decoration is not a necessity on this wedding cake. This cake will look beautiful with nothing on this tier except the satin ribbon and maybe a top border. Okay. Now we'll go back to where we started. And I'm going to put the little embellishments in. Hold the tip in the icing. And then just pull little 
little pieces, little uh, decorations to the side, little curly cue. And then starting in the middle, go in a circular motion. And if your pattern wasn't really rounded, um, your, your sweep when you, when you made the crescent or the, um, the scroll, you can correct it now. There. I usually try to put those embellishments in first. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> okay, so we'll do one more and then I'll go ahead and finish this. And that is going to be the, sc the uh, reverse scroll on the side of the cake. <clears throat> Okay, so the scroll is, is done, and now I'm going to do the bottom border on here. I'm using a number seven tip um, by Atiko or Wilton. Start at the back of the cake, and you just want to lift off the cake and sort of drop this string right at the very edge where the two cakes meet. And if you have to stop and move the cake, it's okay to do that. And just pick up where you left off notice I'm going slow when I do this so I can try to keep the icing as even as possible and that it falls in the right spot and one more around the back Okay, now the easy part is I'm going to attach some six millimeter pearls and you can use the ivory or the white. Doesn't matter where you start. I'm just using a pair of tweezers and about every inch I'm just going to push a pearl into that icing. And every time I push the pearl into the icing it's pushing that little string of icing to exactly to the seam of the cake to hide any seam. Just sort of eyeball these. Now the the um, six millimeter that I'm that I'm using here. Um, these are the super white high gloss pearls. The smaller ones that I'm going to use on the top are our pearl uh, four millimeter draggies that I've put into a little container and I've added a little bit of super pearl dust and just mixed them around so that they're they're shinier and they match these better. Oops. Okay so you get the idea of how that border is done. And that's all there is to the bottom border. For the top border, I'm going to do a basic shell border. I'm going to use the same seven tip and right at a 45 degree angle coming into the edge of the cake and I'm going to pipe a little shell border. If you have a really smooth top and the edge is nicely iced, you don't even have to put a border on here if you don't want to. And that would be your top border. So now your second tier is all done. We're going to move on now and we're going to pipe the vertical lines on the third tier and add the pearls on that tier and uh, do the top border there as well. Okay, I'm using a number five tip, a uh, Wilton tip. Um, again, especially when you have a decoration that you want to make sure is, is really um, uniform and straight, 
Use a small pastry bag. You have much more control of it in your hand than a large pastry bag. So I can see my little marks that I made with my, uh, my little X-Acto knife in the paper. So I know exactly how far down to pipe these. And I start from the top and I just pull away from the cake and then just lightly push it into the cake when I get to the bottom. And you're going to be adding the pearls on these after. So this isn't a hard decoration to do, but it needs to be straight and accurate. And once in a while that happens. <laughs> you get a little air bubble in your icing. Wow. This is why I like to use a needle tool and just take that off the cake. Part of the reason that falls off is my buttercream is dry. Uh, it's, it's got a little bit of a crust on it, so I have to make sure I anchor the top. There. I may have had a big air bubble in my pastry bag too. So that's how that whole pattern is done all the way around the cake. And then I'm going to take some four millimeter draggies and I'm going to put one at the end of every one of these. So they look like little pearls dropping. Let's see, we'll go right up the other side here. This is the part of cake decorating that takes a little patience and time. All right, so now I have my pearls in that V shape and I wanted to add more. So what I'm gonna do is where I have the second, the, the second longest line, right in line with that, I'm gonna add one, whoops, to the long line. And now where the short ones come across, I'm going to add another row of pearls right in line with those. There. And the last one. Okay. And then to finish off the border at the top, I'm going to move back to a number seven tube and I'm going to pipe right along the top edge. Just going to let that string fall right at the very edge. And I'm going to go back to my larger pearls. I'm going to, whoops, and I'm going to put one right at the top of every one. Just try to place them as evenly as you can. You can move them a little bit. Notice I'm holding my wrist with my other hand and that will help you steady your hand. <clears throat> Unless you have a super, super steady hand and you can hold it um, without shaking. Just use your other hand, just brace your, your elbow against your side and that sort of uh, holds as a, just, just something for your, for your hand to hang on to and you actually can rest your hand on this arm and then you'll be very steady when you're putting the drag ease on. So that's just a helpful hint on, on getting these small details on. So we would finish that exact same pr uh, pattern all the way around the cake. We're going to move on to the top tier. This is again um, a tip three, and we're going to do a lily of the valley. 
and I'm just going to move this cake back. Okay, to do this uh, um, leaf scroll pattern on the top, just think of mountain peaks. Just go up and down. Now, the peak goes up like this, so I want to make sure that my leaves follow that line. Here it's coming down, so I'm going to come down. So you want to keep them in the same direction of the, of the flow of that main line. And then you can branch off a little bit. Add two more to each one. And then we're going to move to a tip 67, which is a leaf tip. And I'm going to put a leaf on the end of each one. And before I do this on the cake, I'm going to soften this icing uh, so that the leaves come to a nice point. And that would be the leaves. And then I could go back to um, a number two tip. And I could put little tendrils in. And I'm just going to start where the, where the main line was and just pull some little tendrils out just in a little circular motion, and that will finish off that pattern. So now I'm going to pipe that onto the side of the cake. So I'll begin by doing my little, my little mountainscape. Again, I'm not worried about this. I, I just want the, the overall shape to come out here. I'm not worried about what it really looks like at this point. And then meet up in the back. And now I can add my, my secondary and my little, where my little leaves are going to be. And the last one. Okay, to pipe the, um, the leaves, I've taken about a half a cup of my buttercream icing and I've added about a half a teaspoon of glycerin. And this is available, uh, Wilton makes this. You can buy glycerin in a, um, in a pharmacy as well or a drugstore. Um, you can use water, but I find the glycerin gives it a nice uh, soft consistency. And, it, and the leaves pull out to a nice point very easily. I think this works better than water, and especially in a buttercream, this, um, this doesn't break apart. It, it doesn't cause the icing to break down uh, and separate like water can. So I have my tip 67, and now I'm gonna add my leaves. And if you just let the pressure build up a little bit, There, you just get the ends together. Uh, you'll get a little, uh, like a little wrinkle in the leaf. It just gives them a little motion. The trick is to add enough glycerin so that the icing is soft and comes almost to a point. But if you make it too soft and you get perfect points every time, sometimes the leaf sort of um, droops. Um, because it's too soft. It doesn't actually stay on the side of the cake where you want it to stay. And last one. And then I'm going to switch to a number two tip and add some little tendrils.
Just wherever you feel you want to fill in a little bit. You can add the tendrils. Uh, we're almost done. There. And that is the ivy on the side. And the top border, uh, we're going to go back to the number, um, um, the number, f uh, excuse me, the number seven, the same one that we used for the shell on the, uh, on this tier here. And it's getting a little high here. And we're going to make a very small shell border. And that would be completed all the way around the cake. Now I purposely have not finished every single tier because I just want to show you um, the decoration and basically how to do it. You don't really need to watch me do the entire cake. It gets a little boring after a while. Um, so I've shown you all the basic decorations that are on this cake. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this now. And when we come back, we're going to work with the styrofoam dummies and we're going to arrange our gum paste flowers on the dummy. And then we're get, after we get them exactly the way we want, then we'll know exactly where we need to put our little holes in the cake and insert some straws where we can put the stems of the flowers in. And it will be easy to transfer the design from one cake to the other. And that's why the dummy cakes really come in very handy. The last thing too, we're going to add a satin ribbon around the bottom of our board that will match the three tiers. We'll be right back and we'll get the flowers on this cake. Okay, the cake is all decorated, and before we do a spray of flowers down the side of the cake, which we're going to start by doing on the cake dummies, I wanted to show you some options. And here's one option where I just took two sprays of um, uh, hydrangeas, and I just set them on top of the cake with one of the peonies. And that's all I put on here. And that's very popular today, is just to have a focal flower or a very small amount of flowers on the top of the cake. I'm using gum paste flowers today, but you can also use fresh flowers if you'd like to. Um, whatever, whatever you would like to do for your wedding. Um, so if I take these off, <clears throat> I'll give you another option. And this is just a peony, a yellow peony. And in this case, I would probably set that peony either here or down here. But you can get the visual effect of just what one single focal flower will do for your cake. So that gives you a couple ideas if you don't want a more elaborate uh, floral display. So I'm going to push this aside and I'm going to bring this over. And this is where the cake dummies really, really come into play and become very, very helpful. So I'm starting with three of the, uh, of the lily sprays. Now to prepare these to put into a real cake, I'll take one of the uh, small dowels, or you can use a drinking straw, and just insert that over the end. And then you would cut that just so it fits. And you would insert that into the cake, and that protects the cake from, uh, from any of the uh, uh, the floral tape or any part of, of the uh, gum paste flour uh, and it makes it food safe. So that's what we'll do to prepare but to put them into here we're just going to use them as they are. Okay I'm going to begin by putting in the first lily spray. So I'm going to use my needle nose pliers and I'm going to bend this back. And I know that I'm going to want to put that in this sort of a position coming down. And I'm gonna, I want to put it on the edge of the cake. So for the dummy, I'm just going to create a hole. I'm just creating a hole in the dummy so that I can put this in. Okay. And then you can just adjust the flower, get the leaves and all the petals pointing outward. Okay, and now I want to do two more. I want one more coming down 
this way over here. So I'm going to put in a hole in this cake. And I'm also going to bend that one back. These pre-made gum paste flowers are really quite sturdy. And because I'm playing with the dummies, I can put this in anywhere I want and then just turn the cake so that it fills in. So that'll be my second one. We'll center that cake out. And now I have to figure out where do I want the third one. And I think I want that one more up here. Except I want the greenery going up. So I mark about right where it's going to go. And I'm going to put a hole in there. You may think this is odd working on a styrofoam dummy, but you're going to realize when we put this on the real cake that this is going to make our job much easier. Okay, and I really want this to bend back. There we go. And that's going to give me my little grouping. And now I have to figure out where I want to put my clematis. I know I want one down here. So let's put a hole down in here. On the small flowers or the single flowers, it's easier just to hold them by the pliers and push them in. I'm not going to fiddle around too much with these because it makes no sense to make them perfect on here and then have to move them over. I'll do more of the adjusting over there. Right now, I just want the general idea of where the flowers are going to lay. And I definitely want one up here. I'm going to move that off there. Like that. Okay, and now we want to get that third clematis in. And I have to turn this just for a second so I can see where this is going to go. And I think we're going to put that right back in here. There. Now I have an idea. This gives me sort of a prototype of how I'm going to build my cake. So now the easy part, as I pull these out, I'll see where my holes are. See, we'll get this one out down here. This one on the side of the cake. There. Just line this back up. And now I know exactly where my holes need to go in the cake so that I can get the same exact look on this cake. So now I'm just going to push this to the side and start working on the real cake. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make my holes. I'm going to use um, this little um, cell stick and I'm actually going to poke into the cake and create the hole where the flowers will go. So I'll get these done, we'll come back and we'll put them all in. Okay, so this is the last hole I'm going to make. I'm just using a cell pin and just pushing into the cake. <clears throat> and now we begin. Just push it right into the cake. And now you can fiddle with them a little bit more. So I want this to come down. 
and then I'm going to add one of my I've got my little straws all cut actually the straw is too long let's use a shorter one there we go And we want to bring this down underneath the flower. There we go. Sort of like that. All right, and now we're going to add the second lily spray. Put a little straw in there. Actually, this spray goes up, doesn't it? Oh, the straw stayed right in, which is good. There we go. And the third one. I may have to bend that out. There, and now I have another hole right up here. <clears throat> And let's see, we had created, let's see, am I missing a hole? <laughs> there, I'm just gonna place this one in. I'm actually not gonna create a hole for that. I'm just gonna place it in place. And it's done. So, it takes a little longer to get them on, a, on the cake and get them exactly where you want, but having done them on the dummy first gives you an idea of where to place the flowers so that you're not sticking them all over the cake and then trying to pull them out and cover and patch up again. Um, so as a beginner, this would be the best way for you to do this. Um, there's one last thing I wanna show you on this cake. Um, we're just gonna take a quick break and we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how this four-tier cake can become a three-tier cake. We're going to eliminate the bottom tier. I'm gonna lift up these three tiers and I'm gonna put them on a pedestal. So if you wanna have like a small garden wedding and you just want a three-tier cake with the same design, you'll see what it looks like. We'll be right back. Okay, as promised, I took off the bottom tier and I put it on this pedestal stand so that you could see what a cute little three-tiered cake this makes, perfect for a small wedding. Um, I believe that the whole cake serves about 150 people. That does not include the top tier. I allow you to keep the top tier for your first anniversary, which is usually the custom here in the United States. So these bottom three tiers would serve about 150. These bottom two tiers on this cake would serve about 70 people. Um, so if you're only having 50 or 60 people and you like this cake, there's no reason why you can't bake three regular cakes and use a styrofoam dummy as your bottom tier. You could make this a five tier cake if you want and make part of the cake styrofoam and then the rest of it real cake. It would still be iced and it would still be decorated. This is a very, very common practice today to enlarge your wedding cake and just make it the way you want it to be 
by using styrofoam dummies, just like the dummies that I use throughout this whole uh, procedure today, of showing you how to, how to decorate and how to add the flowers. Those same dummies can be iced and decorated and used in your wedding. I hope you've really enjoyed this, uh, this tutorial on how to make your own buttercream wedding cake. Part two of this same wedding cake series um, shows you how to start from the beginning with a baked cake, how to slice it, fill it, ice it and smooth it, stack it and insert the dowel rod so that you have a completely supported tiered cake. So this time we did the decorating in part one and we did all the beginning parts in part two. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Again, all the supplies are available at globalsugarart.com. Have a great day.